until it's pretty good orange and then just let it naturally cool down just to make it easier to grind. These saw blades are already pretty hard. And in the case that you hadn't figured this out yet, I mentioned in another video the other day working with my herbs that I was going to make me an Alaska newly. You I still don't know how to say that. But I wanted to where I can, I can chop my herbs up pretty good. I've got several things uh, drying behind me over there. Look at this herb here. Now I'm killing it obviously, but it's just picked a bad place to grow. But see how these, I don't know what this plant is. It's a lot like wild lettuce. You see the lactocarium coming out of it? I hadn't even tried to research this, but it has a unique leaf. I'm gonna lay this over here where because while this is running, it's going to burn that up and kill it. But there is some, uh, where did I see them? I've seen a lot of bugs on it. Right up through here on one of these leaves somewhere. But now they'll probably leave once this fire gets to go. But it's seeding out at the end of these. Somebody tell me what that plant is. Because it's got like a carrium coming out of it.
right here I'm just kind of smoothing up around this edge because I want a convex grind. In other words, it won't be a straight taper to a tip. It'll be kind of curved, convex. And then you got a concave grind which dips in, which is a whole lot sharper, but it bends and gets warped and it's not very durable at all. This will be the most durable. Because I don't want, I'm going to be doing a lot of this right here in plants is what I designed this for. I don't know if I'm going to use this to skin animals with or not. We'll just have to see how that works. I've never had a knife like this, so this is new to me. I think I got a slight warp. I mean, it is ever so slight. Not enough for me to worry about. If I was doing this for a living and shipping this to somebody that paid big money for it, I would probably, I don't know, I can't hardly tell. The only way I'm telling is because of the way the grind is. I don't know that you guys can tell. Maybe, maybe not. It's not much. Not enough that I'm going to worry about. It looks like it's going to make a beautiful blade, though. I like how it marbleizes. Let me bring you over here. And this not marbleized. It's just the... Uh, if I can get it in the light where you can tell... I adjusted the focus. Maybe you can tell a little with the light what it looks like. It's hard in a camera to get. And you can see better when I put the footage on the computer, but me looking at this viewfinder, it's hard to tell. And if there's any warpage... They're, 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 maybe a little, I can't tell. It's not a bit, it's not a deal breaker for what I'm doing here. All right, we're going to get to making a handle for it. Okay, what I've got here is a piece of crepe myrtle limb that I had saved. Now I have cut a slot down through here. I did not show how I cut that slot because I don't want you trying that when you get home. Okay, now I don't know if y'all have took notice. I made mine, this is shorter than this. I want this to and be the front of my knife. Now this has a slight dimple up for my fingers to grab. So I want to make sure that I pin this in a certain way that 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 is the front because in other words it's shorter back here for what I'm doing but if I want to cut I have a more of a cut so I, I that has a front and a back in other words is all I'm trying to say now I need to clamp this let me back y'all up Probably should epoxy this. But for the first hole, I'm not. Okay.
Now what I'm doing, I drilled a 1-8 hole in that. And this is a 1-8 brass brazen rod. I don't know if I have shown this. I've used this brazen rod for several different projects. I bought a tube of it years ago. It wasn't as expensive as it is now. Uh, just so that you know, uh, right here. Hang on. Anyway, I can't get the fact the camera to focus, but it's one eighth by thirty six. Uh, low fuming bronze. It's just a good soft rod. Works well for pinning these handles. Uh, most everybody uses an epoxy. Uh, in theory, you're supposed to. You're supposed to pin these handles and ping it on both sides and it hold it on there. The epoxy is just to be sure that that works. So I'm probably going to epoxy this just for good measure. But what I wanted to do was pin one hole so it wouldn't move. while I drilled the other hole and I can get my pliers and pull that back out. And that's the only reason. Once I get both holes drilled, I may should epoxy it now. I'm trying to decide what I want to do. And I really don't want to epoxy it at all. I don't think I am. I think I'm going to attempt to just put it together. Just like the old timers would have done. We get too dependent on glues and all that stuff to the point that if it gets to a place that we can't get a hold of that stuff. Now what I'm doing here, I've got a little bit protruding on either side. I don't know if you can tell, but there's a sixteenth of an inch sticking out on either side. I'm going to ping that and it'll and see on this steel plate I don't know if you've seen I've got a half inch or a three eighth steel plate laying there but I'm not going to be chopping and abusing this knife so this should work fine If I was going to be batoning like most, and don't get me started on batoning a knife. I, I disagree highly with batoning wood, beating a knife blade through a block of wood. There's too many easier ways to split wood without abusing a knife and possibly breaking it because... To the guy that spent $300 on a knife and he's beating on it, or the guy like me that has made a knife and knows what it's made out of, versus the guy that just watches this on YouTube and he goes and buys him a $50 knife because maybe that's all he can afford or all he has, and then he breaks it beating on it with sticks when there's really no call for There's no reason to have to do that. I mean, I just don't like it. And I have done it. Now when I'm drilling this, you don't want to drill wide open. You want to drill slow. I kneeled the back of this. Let me finish this now, I tell you. the whole blade so that I could 
grind it easier. When I went back and re-tempered it, I tried to only temper the edge of this. I didn't want to harden the whole thing. And it hits right there. There's about of an eighth of an inch sticking up. So what I do is I get over this one of these holes in this block. I don't know if you can see them or not. Yeah, you can. You can see that hole. I put my pen over that and drive it about halfway through. Like I said, where it's sticking out on both sides, and then I'm going to... Then I'm going to swell that up. And that will hold... And see, that is secure. Guys, we got a knife made just that quick. Just that quick. Let's go outside and put some oil on it. Okay, this is some oil that I talked about the other day, but just in case you're watching my video and you hadn't seen any of my other videos, I am going to sand this beforehand. This... I tried to show in my, one of my plant videos, this is animal fat. Now you see these bugs and stuff got in here, it ain't hurting a thing. It just looks bad. But this is chunks of like beaver fat, uh, raccoon fat, and skunk fat. Deer tallow is different, and I don't know that you can see this. Let me pour it in this bowl. But look how liquid... You see how that is a liquid there? And just from the heat uh, of the environment I live in out here in this shed, it's, right now, today, it's in the, close to 100. Uh, it don't always get that hot here in Mississippi, but our humidity is what gets us down. I'm going to clean this bowl with this little rag. This is a piece of a uh, uh, but I'm going to use this all on the blade, on the wood, on everything. This is natural animal fat oil. Seal the ends of this wood really good and around those pins really good. And then I'm probably going to sand on that. I said I was going to do it beforehand. I went to rubbing oil on there, but it don't really matter because this is going to absorb into the wood. And you're, I'm going to put several coats on it. But guys, I've got about, I don't know, maybe two hours in making this. Two, three hours in this whole thing. And I've worked on it a little bit yesterday. Roughed it out, cut the shape out. And then I come out here today and started grinding on it when I had a chance. But it didn't take me long to make this knife. And I strictly wanted it to cut on plants, chop up plants, and we're fixing to test it out. That's one of the reasons this oil, it's a natural oil. It's an oil that I made, oh, and it, it, I've put it on several things. I'm probably, that's probably what I'm going to put on my Kentucky rifle that I'm building. I haven't got it out and worked on it anymore because I've just been lazy, I ain't going to lie. I wanted to work on these plant videos for one thing because right now the plants are all getting ready and uh, I wanted to do the plant videos. Okay, I sanded on it just a little bit there. Just to round up, smooth up my edges and smooth up on my pins. And then I've still got oil in this rag. I'm just going to go back over it, but it's... That oil will soak into there, and I'll come over this every couple of days, probably till I get it good and soaked with oil so that this handle don't check. Uh, but now I have already sharpened this blade to a degree. Now, this right, as, as of right now, I'm not going to make this knife razor sharp because I want to chop plants up with it. So. Uh, now I've got oil on my table. I've got to figure out how to pull that oil out of that pan back into... Uh, let me put this grease back over here. You 
you can just, it's got a little bit of a, gonna really do anything with this this is some plantain right out the front door but now that I'm chopping it up I'm probably going to dry it and use it as one of my herbs and a lot of times I take this in that barrel and dunk it that's what I want right there I'm gonna use these uh, let's see Pull this out. And let's do this. Okay. I don't want the stems. Now I can grab my plant material and I can slide all of these seed pods out of it. Them's already drying. I'll lay them here. I'll do. I'm thinking about you. The seeds are medicinal as well for that. But we're playing with a knife, testing how it works. And I have never used a knife like this. I'll probably whack my finger off with it. Guys, I like that. be honest with you, if you hadn't used a knife like this, I may have to take this into the kitchen. <laughs> it would have been great to And I'll get a better cutting board for this. is is once you you know you can rake your, your plant material up look very handy knife very handy knife all right we'll do like we did on some of fishing i'll let y'all get to uh move my lens cap instagram picture we have to clean up some of the junk that gets left in the out of the photos. I know people wonder, how are you making pictures? There's junk all right outside the screenshot, so. Well, I am very pleased with this. Hopefully this won't be too long of a video. But thank you guys for watching my video on making this Alaskan Yulu. Or Yulu. I wish I knew how to pronounce that. I get on my uh, phone, I got a dictionary, and I type it in there, and then that lady, she'll pronounce it. All right, Siri, hey, I tell you, let's do this. Hey, Siri, what is an Alaskan Yulu? Okay, I found this on the web for what is an Alaskan Yulu. Check it out. Hey Siri, hmm? what is an Alaskan Yulu? Okay, I found this on the web for what is an Alaskan Yulu. Check it out. Well, let's see it. Siri, she don't know no more than I do about it, so. Dictionary app. We're going to solve this. It is pronounced Ulu. Not Yulu or Yuli, it is Ulu. Dictionary app. iPhone answers it, solves all problems. So it's an Alaskan Ulu. But anyway, works good. I'm 
pleased with it. Thank y'all for watching. We'll see y'all next time on Spirit of the Outdoors.